Hi there. Welcome to the fifth episode of Brain Power Seminar. What a great privilege to live and um, to have abundance of life. We looked at 10 times wiser, the real mind, the muddled mind, and we also looked at the power crisis that we see in people's brains. At this session, we're going to look at the power supply, the power supply to the brain. And it's like a computer. It needs to be uninterrupted, constant power there. You could also look at uh, some of the other topics we're going to look at in the series, shaping your thoughts, good cop, bad cop, your brain, and uh, satisfaction or, or slavery. Uh, yeah, your brain and the belly. It's your choice at the end of the day. Your brain, intimacy and seduction. Who is in charge? And the power of freedom. And then, yeah, the cherry on the cake, renewing your mind. To recap of what we did in the last episode, I want to remind you of the blood sugar levels that should be nice and stable, slow release energy level, where you eat in the morning and you would have no need for snacking in between because the sugar levels are nice and high. And that in comparison with overshooting and undershooting, our power supply not being nice and controlled, and that would leave your brain with a serious risk. Now, brain facts that you and I should know is that glucose is the fuel of the body and especially of the brain. This glucose is derived from the carbohydrates that we, that we take in. We also need to know that 25% of the oxygen that our body, um, of our body's usage goes to, to the brain. Our brain needs oxygen and glucose all the time. As with oxygen, your brain uses 25% of the blood circulated in your body. So there needs to be no restrictions so that the food and the oxygen can get to these cells, especially your brain cells, at the given time. It's interesting to know that 45 liters of blood travels through the brain in every hour. We should also know that if your brain loses blood for 8 to 10 seconds, you will lose consciousness, and after this, you will die. Now, specifically on the power supply to your brain, I need to share this very, very important verse with you uh, at this stage. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31 says, So whether you eat or you drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. We are so conditioned to eat for the appetite instead of looking after the cells, really fending, really caring for the cells, especially our brain cells. And this is the reason why we need to have that slow-release energy level um, in, our, in, our, in our bloodstream. And uh, the main cause for problems in this area is because of poor lifestyle. We could cause this problem by poor lifestyle. We could cure it by changing our lifestyle to a good, balanced lifestyle. Now, in this, in this um, session, I would love to, to give you five pointers of how you could keep, keep your blood sugar levels nice and stable and in reality keep your brain working optimally all the time. And the first one, very important, to take control of your blood sugar levels is a good breakfast. A good breakfast. Now, one of the researches, um, the studies that, that, that really helps us a lot is the I Iowa brec breakfast study. They found that People that would have insufficient protein content of breakfast, 12 grams in this specific meal, they found that the blood sugar levels rapidly rise, especially when sugar was eaten with that breakfast. They also found that it did not sustain until lunchtime. So that curve came down before it was lunchtime. People felt like snacking in between because they, they started feeling that weak feeling. The study showed that roughage and protein plays a very important part in maintenance of good blood sugar levels. Now, I want to just, just uh, 
make sure that we, we do understand that we're not saying that you should have high protein in the form of animal protein. We, we don't always realize that there's protein even in fruit. I'm not talking about the worms in the apple. We're talking about protein in the apple, for instance. And our body does not need as much as, as um, our diet really dictates in our Western society today. They say that a man should not, an uh, adult man should not have more than 60 grams of protein in a day's time. Uh, a lady, not more than 48 grams of protein. So you need just to have enough. And 20 to 25 grams during your breakfast would really give you a five to six hours of stable blood sugar levels. This is really profound. There's going to be no desire for empty snacks in between if you have this um, really worked out. The study did not recommend a high protein diet. So let's keep this in mind as we go on. There's some very, very important advantages of a good breakfast. Number one, there's more efficient problem solving and memory when you would have a good, solid breakfast. There's not going to be this mid-morning tiredness where you just feel like, you know, I wish I had a break. I cannot deal with this day. There's going to be shorter reaction time if I have a good breakfast. There's going to be greater work output at the end of the day. Better scholastic records. A lot of this, this research finds that if a child had a good breakfast, they actually do, do so much better when it comes to their records at the end of the day. Better attitude. Uh, working with some of the hospitals in our area, closely um, connected to, 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 to diet and this issue around diet, we see a big, big, big difference between kids that have a good breakfast, not snacking in between meals, with regards to their attitude. They have a much be better and controllable attitude. Better attention span. So, you know, there's a longer attention span, but more concentration when I would have a good breakfast. And then better verbal fluency. They just speak better. They, they communicate better with a good breakfast. Now, the question is, you know, what is a good breakfast? Normally, and we grow up this way, we would have a slice of bread. It would be toast, maybe with Marmite on or jam or whatever, and a cup of coffee, and that is breakfast. Then you have to run to be at your appointment. What is a good breakfast? I'm going to share with you a very standard little breakfast, and we're going to play around with this. You normally need about two fruits. So if I would have an a apple and a banana, and um, if you really want to do yourself a favor, maybe put a third one with maybe an orange. Have that as your fruit for your breakfast. Besides the fresh fruits, we would need whole grain, well-cooked porridge. And that is really not what the Western society dictates. You know, we have this instant boxed breakfasts that we just add the milk to and we have that. That is fairly expensive. If you think of one of those boxes, it could cost you between 25 and 30 rand. Well, for a family of four, that would last you three, four days. But if you would have a cooked porridge, that would uh, be much, much cheaper, and you've got the whole grain. There's nothing added. There's nothing taken away. It is the solid thing. I want to demonstrate this very quickly. A good breakfast is something that would take me around about 10 minutes tonight for a good breakfast tomorrow morning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pot on the stove. I'm going to put the three grains that I'm going to use. This is barley, and this is sorghum here. Yeah? We're going to use sorghum and rolled oats. And we'll put this in the, in the pot, around about one-third cup of each of these. And then I would put in about three um, whole cups of water. I can maybe take it up to three and a half cups of water, a little bit of salt, and... I would put the plate on high and get this to boiling. The moment it is boiling, now it's, it's good to have a, uh, a top that you can see through, but if not, just hear. You can hear the sound. It's boiling. When it's boiling, 
don't lift the pot's um, lid. And we're going to put this into a cooler bag. You know these cooler bags? It's got a isolated inside. You need three of them. And uh, this really works well. You put the pot in there. Now it's hot. It's, uh, it's boiling. I'm putting it in. You could maybe put uh, at the bottom of your, of your bag. You can just put a, a plate, an upside plate down, down inside there. And you would zip this up. And you would zip the second one and the third one. You need three bags. Otherwise, you can use a duvet. Put this in a plastic bag. The pot in a plastic bag. One of these black bags. And put it in a duvet. Cover it nicely. And you leave this for the night. And tomorrow morning, it will still be hot and scrumptious. It's going to really be great. Now, we could use a cup of milk for those that are not using... Um, dairy products you could use soya milk or rice milk or you could use nut milk and that you put over the parts it'll still be hot when you get it out of your of your bags tomorrow morning and you could spread uh, you know put some sprinkle some some uh, some seeds over there um, we're going to talk about the seeds uh, in, in one of our other episodes um, but this is linseed sesame seed sunflower seed and pumpkin seed we're going to spread that over the breakfast and uh, really to extend this nice blood sugar levels i could add a little uh, slice of bread and uh, i could have a spread on there maybe peanut butter i don't love peanut butter too much but you could have something like um, a basil spread or a carob spread a date spread um, for the sweet, uh, for those that have a sweet tooth, you could have that. Or just um, have a cotta pear and tomato and maybe an olive spread. Uh, eh, well, man, my, I'm, I'm really getting hungry as I, as I present here. And uh, with that, four nuts. It could be four almonds. You don't need hands full. Just four almonds. That would give you a very, very good balanced breakfast. That's going to last for five to six hours. We're talking about 26 to 28 grams of protein in this breakfast that is demonstrated right here. Now, the question is, how much should I eat of this? Well, a very good guideline is that you would have adequate this morning that you would not be hungry until the next meal. So you don't want to be hungry in between. You don't need a snack in between. If you feel you're hungry before the next meal, you could adjust the quantities. Have a little bit more porridge or have a slice more bread and uh, you would find that's going to work well. That is the first very important factor on keeping your blood sugar levels nice and stable. The second one is avoid eating in between meals. What we're saying is I would have breakfast and have nothing to eat until it is lunchtime. Nothing in between. You can have liquids, you can have water to drink, and so on, but nothing to eat in between meals. Um, there's quite a few studies that gives us a very, very important uh, information around this. The nurses study, for instance, um, they took a group, they gave them a good breakfast. The breakfast consisted of cereal and cream they had bread they had cooked fruit and they had one boiled egg with this breakfast the first group they gave an ice cream cone two hours after breakfast and they have found that there was residues of the breakfast still in the tummy after six hours the second group, they gave a, a peanut butter sandwich. Now, I can think, you know, ice cream cone, maybe not the, the healthiest, but a peanut butter sandwich, that is much better. But look at the results. Nine hours later, there were still residues of the breakfast still in the tummy. The third group, they gave pumpkin pie and a glass of milk. Now, you know, pumpkin pie is really good. I mean, if you talk, my grandmother always said, eat your pumpkin, that is very good to you. Well, if you would have a pumpkin pie, glass of milk, look at that. Two hours after breakfast, nine hours later, even this good things, 
still residues of that breakfast nine hours later. I want to remind you, our tummies are hot, humid. If something stays in there in a too long fashion, it's going to go off. It would really go off. Now, this is really very important to remember. Group number four, half a slice of bread and butter, and they repeated this every one and a half hours, and they gave them no dinner. They found that more than half of the tummy's content of the breakfast was still in there nine hours after they had this breakfast. Then the fifth group, twice in the morning and twice in the afternoon, they gave them a little bit of chocolate bar. Now, you know, this is something that we really do in between. Somebody offers us something, we have it. But look at the profound outcome. Half of the breakfast was still in the tummy 13 and a half hours after breakfast time. Very scary thought if you think about that. Because 13 and a half hours later, that breakfast is really not in a good state in that humid, hot place called the tummy. Very important that we keep our, our breakfast time, not eat in between meals. Next meal, we have our next um, meal. Nothing after that until we have our next meal. Very, very important. There's a third factor that we need to keep in mind to keep our blood sugar levels nice and stable over the day period. We need to have three or less regular meals per day. Three or less regular meals per day. Since I have contracted cancer in 1997, I've changed my lifestyle. And one of the adaptions I've made was going on a two meals diet per day. And I must tell you, this has been a profound. I have more energy levels than when I was much younger. I don't have any need or any craving for, for snacks in between because I have a good breakfast and then I would only have a lunch. And that would be it for the day. I would have liquids in between and really doing so, so well. You see, the common advice today is five to seven small little meals a day. And especially when you're a diabetic, you know, that is really what's prescribed. I need to say that that is really old school um, teaching. We find in most of our hospitals today that even diabetics are on two meals a day, many of them three meals a day. In our centers, we run on two meals a day, and we've got prof very, very good outcomes there. You see, logic doesn't always, always work. You know, logic says if you have small little meals, then you're going to supply the brain constantly with the glucose. That's really not true because we need to know that the blood sugar is not in the cell. We need to have it in the cell. It's not in the cell when we show it being high. Um, our body is, is programmed to have regular meals, not in, in, uh, eating in between the meals. We find today, and research has really proved this, that frequent meals really causes insulin resistance. Our, res our receptors get damaged because of this eating in between meals. Let's just talk about insulin for a, for a moment. Insulin is um, manufactured in our pancreas. And uh, insulin is really the key to the cell doors. We need the sugar or the glucose where? We need it in the cells. Now, there's little doors on the cells, and uh, there is little locks in these doors, and insulin is the key that opens these locks, opens the door so that the glucose can go into, s into, the, into the cell. Now, what happens is, with our, left, uh, with our Western lifestyle today, we find that that little door's locks are all blocked up, and the keys can't fit in there. And so the doors can't open, and the glucose then builds up in the arteries. Because of our lifestyle and the high sugar content, it's even, even worse. Now, I want to take you to another point, and that's 
control number four. We need to have regular exercise. When we call regular exercise, we say every day, well, at least six days a week, we need to have at least 30 minutes of good exercise. You could do yourself a great favor by just going up and down a step. You know, a 200 millimeter step. Just go up, step up and down, and as you get fitter, just do it faster. You can start with 10 steps, 10 minutes of stepping per day. That's equal to about 20 to 30 minutes of, of, of brisk walk. But start, you know, and especially beginners, don't, don't just start running, you know, 10 kilometers. Um, I've had people, you know, phoning and say, you know, you said I'm going to start exercising. And I started, I'm so stiff now, I can't walk. Please, let's do it, you know, gently. Start walking. Start just gently walking, you know, walk until you are warm. This is really very important beginner's safety guides. Just walk until you're warm and then leave it for tomorrow. And then tomorrow, you're going to you know, extend a little bit. You need to breathe deeper. You know, if you're going to walk and you don't breathe deeper, then it's not, gonna, you know, it's not good enough exercise. But in all of this, a safety guide is you must always be able to talk. So when you start, just walk slowly and you're going to start walking faster. But always you must be able to talk. If you're getting out of breath and you can't talk, you know that you are exerting yourself. I've seen older people, senior citizens, coming to our lifestyle centers, and they can hardly walk 60 to 70 meters. And then they have to stop and get their breath back. You won't believe it. After 10 days, they would walk with us 2, 3 kilometers at our pace. God has created us so wonderfully. We can pick up and go you not too, it's not too late. You're never too old to do that. And then you just increase the intensity. You increase the time gradually and start walking more, start walking faster, and you would see great, great results. The fifth control of keeping your blood sugar levels nice and stable is drinking enough water. We really don't do this one well. Well, some people say the water doesn't taste good. That's why I don't have water. It doesn't taste good. They say that any water is better than no water. Because some people say, no, the water is just too impure. I can't drink water. I'd rather stay without water. Any water is better than no water. There's ways of cleaning your water. And we don't have the time in, um, in this episode to, to talk about that. But at some time, we can discuss how we can purify water in, a, in the best way. But we need to drink enough water. Let me tell you, let's explain to you what dehydration really causes in our body. When the water is taken out of the cells, because that's where it's been taken out, then we would find that the glucose goes with the water. Now, where do I need the glucose? In my cells. If I don't have the glucose in my cells, I'm going to start feeling tired, and uh, I'm going to have no energy, and that's going to cause ultimately poor brain function. I was so amazingly surprised when I invigilate students in exam room and I could see a student really battling and I would give that person a glass of water and they would drink the glass of water. Minutes later, I could see that activity getting back to where it should be. Pain is starting to write and... Uh, Many of these students would come back to me and say, wow, thank you, sir, for what you've done. You really saved my day. I didn't know what to do. The water has really helped to, to hydrate the system again and all these neuro, um, uh, transmitters working properly again. You could test this. You know, look at your urine. It should be a pale straw color. If it's more concentrated, it means there's a problem. You need more water. So that's a good indication. Let's just summarize. To empower you to have good brain power. Number one, eat a good breakfast. Adequate breakfast, whole grain, unrefined. Don't eat in between meals. You also need to um, have not more than three meals a day. Uh, I'm on a two-meal day diet. It works like a bomb. Exercise at least 30 minutes, six days a week, and then drink enough water. 
You see, there's profound outcomes in our decisions. Every day's choice, my thoughts, my acts that I make today does affect myself and my self-function of tomorrow. And these changes of my lifestyle really change who I am. I want to end with this beautiful verse in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. It says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. You have life today. Choose today to live. And that has a profound effect even on your offspring. We've looked at the power supply in this, um, in this session. With our next episode, we're going to look at shaping your thoughts. And there we're going to focus on the essential fatty acids, really something that you and I need to focus. Until next time, make good choices, eat well, live well, and be blessed. Bye-bye.